Hey guys, we're going to be learning about the overall uh, interface of the UDK today. I just have a default map loaded up, but if uh, you want to know how to load it up, you go to Start All Programs, and you can scroll down to the Unreal Development Kit. Uh, pick whichever one you have installed. I have quite a few different ones loaded up at the moment, but uh, just go into the UDK Editor, and then it'll load up this screen. You may come up with uh, a Choose Map Template button. It doesn't really matter for now which one you pick. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, one of the lighting settings and we can go from there. So you have your overall uh, drop down menus at the top here. Um, there's a lot of functionality but most of it can be found within some of these buttons in the uh, window so we'll, we'll cover them at a later time. Uh, starting from left to right where we've got to create a new level, exactly what I just clicked then. Uh, you can just create a, a blank map uh, or choose one of the lighting templates. Um, we've also got open uh, existing level, which uh, obviously opens uh, a file. Drop down to recent recent maps that have been open, and and then you've also got your favorite buttons there if you want to tag any of your favorites. Uh, save current levels, save all levels. You won't really be using the save all levels for now. That means when you've got multiple levels loading in, uh, it's to do with level streaming, so you don't need to worry about that for now and then you've got save all writable packages uh, we'll cover packages in just a moment uh, you've got undo last action and redo they'll, they'll be apparent when you're actually editing and you can undo redo things uh, and then we've got the uh, mouse tool so we can do that or we've got a movement widget tool uh, which when you select things in the browser uh, I'll just go to like a, a light for example uh, we can select that uh, at the moment the arrows are facing uh, in a random direction that's because uh, up here local local uh, world settings are there so we'll just go on world for now and then that points it in the right axis uh, up down left right uh, so as you can see that well as you might be able to see this light's got a, a white arrow uh, there and that's what the local is referring to the kind of um, direction that that light's facing, but yeah, it should most most often than not be automatically set on world. So if that's not on world, set that to now. Uh, so we've got the move widget there. We've also got rotate, which can uh, rotate the direction of the sun uh, and any other actor you have selected. Um, and then we also have scale, which will just scale the, the light up and down. And you can't really tell with uh, the light, but uh, if we quickly find another actor in here, um, I've just got another window open with my uh, generic browser, which we'll cover in a second. But say I throw a uh, barrel in here, we can see that much better with the barrel scaling. So um, yeah, that's that. Uh, we've also got a non-uniform scale, which will obviously keep things, you know, non-uniform. We've already covered uh, local and world. Uh, we've got find actors, uh, which any actor in your scene uh, you'll be able to find. Um, so, like you've got your dominant directional light, for example, which is your big light there. It's just an easy, easy tool to find anything that you've put in your scene. Say you've um, put a couple of point lights in there that you don't like, you know, you can uh, find those in there and uh, go ahead and select them. Next we have the content browser, which I just had open in the other window, I'll just drag that in for you now. And this has all your usability in um, the UDK, this is where you'll find most of your assets and all your actors. So um, we'll cover that in more in depth in the later tutorial, but just uh, for now that's where you'll find uh, your library of uh, assets. We've got this green K button here, which is the Kismet, and this is uh, the visual scripting tool for um, the UDK. Uh, we can select loads of different types of uh, uh, scripting in this uh, window here, but we'll go into all this at a later time as well. Uh, this next button just loads up an Unreal Matinee, which we'll talk about again later on. That, um, that kind of links in with Kismet. You have Matinees and Kismet, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, for now, we've got distance clipping far plane. Um, this is a pretty useful uh, button right here, uh, toggling on and off. It's if you have any transparent uh, materials in your level, uh, such as water, 
I mean, uh, if this button's unselected and you try clicking on some water, you won't be able to select it. So if there's anything translucent in your scene uh, that you, you have trouble selecting, uh, just remember that that button's there. Um, yeah, so those two are connected. Uh, we've got build build geometry um, for visible levels. Uh, you'll be using this tool when you're actually um, building your first levels out of BSP and stuff. It'll just update along with uh, build lighting, uh, which obviously builds your lighting. You got build path uh, next, uh, which has to do with like uh, when you're actually playing the game is the best way to describe it. And you have like AI um, bots moving along different uh, paths and stuff that that. That really refers to that kind of stuff, and cover nodes on a similar similar pr approach. Uh, you got build all, which will build all of those four things. So generally, I mean, if you're just building a level to play test, you could build all if that's if that's what you need to do. But just keep in mind that uh, the the time the loading times will take a lot longer than just, for example, building geometry. Um, and all, all these next couple of buttons you don't really need to worry about. Full screen mode I guess if you need to use that and real time audio which um, you could use but I've never really used those. Uh, these these buttons are more uh, iOS device previews and stuff like that uh, since I think August or September uh, you've had the access to mobile gaming in the Unreal Development Kit so uh, those buttons are for those. We won't be covering that in these tutorials for now but maybe um, approach on a, a, a fresh set of tutorial videos. And you've got your Enable Kismet Debugger. You won't really need to use this either. Uh, what it's basically for is to find breakpoints in your Kismet. Um, so when we're uh, doing loads of different uh, scripting in Kismet, uh, say something's not working, you can add those and it kind of has a breakpoint to show where, where the, what part of scripting actually isn't working. And the last button is just to play the level in this editor window. Uh, we can add, it either loads up a new uh, screen for you to play in, or you can play in this uh, window here, um, or we can just simply right click and play from here. But again, we'll be going into this in a later uh, later video. So down the side, we have uh, these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different boxes. Uh, we'll go, go through each one. Uh, generally you'll have camera mode selected at all times this helps you select all the different actors in your scene and you know use your different widget tools um, uh, the next one would be uh, geometry mode which um, brings up this little ge geometry tool window uh, which kind of just lets you manipulate BSP brushes uh, we'll be going into this in the, f uh, the first couple of videos when we're building a basic BSP brush but it allows you to select like different vertices and edges and stuff like that. Uh, so that's your geometry tool. Uh, your next is your terrain editing mode. This is a, a very useful tool in the UDK, but it's since been replaced with landscape mode. So generally, if you're doing any kind of terrain, you'd be using the landscape mode, uh, which kind of has a nice, fresh um, looking interface. It allows you to select uh, and paint different. Um, like say for example hills, mountains and add erosions, different things like that. You have a lot of control over that. Whereas the old interface, if you wanted to check it out, is kind of a lot dated and it doesn't have as much functionality. Uh, but you can still use it for any, any of those people that are used to using it. So just keep in mind that terrain and landscape are pretty much linked, but you you really want to be using landscape mode uh, from now on. Um, so we have texture alignment mode, uh, which when we're applying uh, mater materials to BSP brushes, we can use that to pan it. Uh, we, I've never really had any use for this, but um, it could be useful for some artists, I guess. Uh, you got mesh paint mode, which we won't be touching upon in these videos, uh, along with static mesh mode, um, which we may cover, but they're, they're more advanced uh, UDK functionalities. And then lastly we have the foliage mode which was uh, another recent addition to the Unreal Development Kit uh, just in the last couple of months and which allows you to paint um, on uh, plants and any other trees, any types of static meshes you want. Uh, we will give you a couple of examples of these but basically you just open up your content browser here and just drag and drop uh, a plant into here and just paint it straight onto the landscape which is